Hey folks, this is Chef Kevin. Tonight I made an amazing baked chicken using jumbo red chestnut garlic along with a whole bunch of fresh garden herbs and butter. And this is something that you can make yourself. It's really simple stuff, although it is time consuming but in the end it's worth it. So if you'd like to see how I made this all you have to do is keep watching. Okay I have two heads of garlic here. This is the pretty much everyday garlic. Um, now most of the garlic you get in the United States comes from one particular place in California, Gilroy, the largest producer of garlic in the United States at Gilroy, California. And a lot of the garlic comes from China, which I want nothing to do with. And some of it comes from Spain as well. This is an heirloom head of garlic. This is red garlic. This is red Chinook garlic. And it's from Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song, keeps Georgia on my mind. No, Ray, not that Georgia. The Republic of Georgia, which was part of the former USSR. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this first because this is time consuming. I'm going to roast this. And this is one of the better roasting garlics out there. And this is a large bulb variety. You can see how large the, the bulbs are. Okay, so I'm going to put a little olive oil on top of that. Okay, I'm going to wrap it fairly tight, and I'm going to put this in the oven and bake this for an hour at 400 degrees and this will become nice and sweet. This is one of the best varieties of garlic to, to roast. There's several different types of garlic and I'm trying to expand my garlic repertoire. So this is going to be nice and nutty and nice and sweet and then I'm going to add that to the butter along with other garden herbs that I have here and make a, a nice compound butter for this chicken. So it's been one hour. That's it right there. One hour at 400 degrees. Shut that off. Let's take a look here. Okay, as you can see, it's nicely caramelized. Bring you in there, yeah. It's nicely caramelized and it smells so nice, so beautiful. And the garlic has become very soft. And this is going to be used in my compound butter. I'm going to let it cool down first. In the meantime, I'm going to prep the, the herbs for this. Okay, so I have some fresh herbs from my garden here. I have some rosemary. I have some thyme. 
and I have some sage as well. These all go quite well with poultry. And I also have some rainbow peppercorns. Those are obviously not from my garden. Okay, I'm going to rinse these and then start prepping them. Okay, so I have a mini food processor here. So I'm just going to strip these leaves off the branches. Sort of like that. There's nothing like fresh garden herbs for a great meal. And this is really basic stuff. Of course, if you don't have a garden, you can go to the grocer and get pretty much the same thing. Yeah, you don't want any stems in there, like this one here. Okay, looks good. going to add about that amount of rainbow peppercorns. That's not even a full tablespoon, probably about a half a tablespoon. Okay, so I have about three tablespoons of fresh ground rosemary and peppercorns in here. I'm going to take about half of those out and put that aside because I'm going to use that on the outside of the bird. Okay, I have my thyme here. Strip those down pretty much the same way as I did the rosemary. Fresh thyme goes so well with poultry, as does the sage. Can have one leaf of sage here. Cut that stem off. I'm just going to roll it up like that. Just a nice little chop, make that nice and fine.
Okay, so that's about a third of a cup of fresh herbs. I have a stick of butter here. That's four ounces, but I'm not going to use all four ounces. I'm just going to use about half. And it's two ounces. Okay, I have my beautiful garlic here. I'm just going to squeeze some of that. on top that was salted butter at yeah, room temperature Okay, so here's my compound butter, and that's going to go under the skin of the chicken, and I'm going to use the seasonings to go on top of the chicken as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this in the fridge because that'll make it easier to work with, and then I'm going to prep the chicken. So here is my chicken. This is a five and a half pound free range chicken. And you can see it has a nice color to it. It's not white. It's got some nice little reddish tan to it or tone to it, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to do is place the compound butter under the skin. So what I'm going to do is take a spatula and just try to loosen up that skin what you don't want to do is pierce it because then the butter will leak out now you can do this with other birds as well, you can do this with a turkey we have Thanksgiving coming up. This is a nice way to season a bird. Okay, I got that spatula pretty much all the way back there without breaking it. So I'm going to take some of the compound butter. Get that in there. And that's all going to melt between the flesh and the skin. Put some on the outside. This is a garlic lover's chicken that's for sure let's not forget the bottom so that was half a stick so it's really pretty pretty well coated Not much left. Try to rub it all over. Okay, let me just rinse my hands. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to salt the bird. I haven't had any salt on the outside of the bird. The the butter was salted butter, so I didn't want to add any salt to it. Don't want to make this overly salted. I have some of my leftover fresh herbs. I use that all up. Okay. There she is. Now I'm going to put it in the the cocotte. I'm going to be cooking this in a cocotte, which is a Dutch oven. And as soon as I rinse my hands, then I'll show you how that's done. Oh, one thing I did forget is I have two cloves of garlic here. And I'm just going to press them. I'm going to leave the skin on and I also have a wedge of lemon okay so here is my cocotte or Dutch oven this is a Staub four quart coquette, cocotte Dutch oven And this is how I like to cook chickens in the oven because this retains a lot of moisture so you end up with a very nice moist bird. This is just a little grill. I set that inside because you don't want the chicken to lie on the bottom or else it'll end up boiling. So this fits rather nicely in there. I have a couple of bay leaves. I'm going to put those in there. I have four slices of lemon. I'm going to drop those in there and that will add to the juice when I make the gravy. Okay, what I'm going to do now is heat this up on the stove top to make it nice and hot and then I'll put it in the oven. Uh, 350 for about an hour and a half. So this is five and a half pound bird. Okay, so let's heat this up and put it in the oven. Okay, so I got this heating up. I'm going to make it pretty hot. That'll start the cooking process and then throw it in the oven. Now I have this covered in foil. I'm not using the Staub lid because if I was to use the lid the chicken would stick to the top of the lid because it's it's kinda high and then you will end up pulling off the skin so it leaves a bad um, a bad look bad, imp bad impression so just gonna rather loosely cover it in foil and then after an hour I'll take the foil off and I'll start cooking the top of the bird Okay, so it's been cooking for an hour at 375 degrees. It's coming along nicely. It smells fantastic. Um, I'm gonna, it still has like 45 minutes or so to go, so I'm going to put it back in the oven and cook it uncovered and get that top cooked nicely, nice and crisp. Still back in the oven. So it's been an hour and 45 minutes and the internal temperature of the bird is about 170, pretty much 170. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it. I don't want to overcook it. And this is going to continue to cook on its own just because of all the internal heat and the fact that it's sitting in a cast iron pot which retains a lot of heat so it does look pretty nice though 
So I'm going to let this cool down like any protein. You can't cut into a hot protein or else the fluids will run out and thus you do not want a dry bird. So I'm going to let this rest 15-20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to get my sides together. I'm going to make a nice meal. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the, the pot and I want to make sure I don't destroy the appearance of it. So I'm going to come up from the bottom here. Get the tongs under the bottom. One tongue under the bottom and one on the inside. Like that. That's still pretty hot, so I'm going to keep it warm by covering it with a piece of tin foil. But what I want to show you though is all the all the juice that's left, and that'll make a nice gravy, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Thanks for ruining my video. So let's make a little sauce here, a little gravy for the chicken. You're going to have gravy. It'd be uncivilized to do otherwise. So I have a hot pan here, a little butter. I have five mushrooms, white mushrooms, white button mushrooms. A little sea salt in there. Gonna let these cook down. Get them nice and brown, nice and caramelized. I'll probably take about 10 minutes or so. Now this is the juice from the bird. And that's a little over a half a cup. And there's a good good layer of grease fat on top. So I don't want that in the gravy. So what I'll do is I'll just spoon that off and save the remainder. And then add some chicken broth and a little flour. And we'll have a nice gravy. Okay, the butter has been absorbed by the mushrooms. I'm going to put about two teaspoons of butter in now. And about the same amount of flour. Making a little roux here and this will make the gravy nice and thick. So I'm going to stir this around for a little while. I don't want to darken the roux too much. If you make it too dark, you won't hold the, it won't thicken up quite as nice. So I'm going for a blonde roux. Okay, everything is pretty much ready. I reduced the heat. In fact, I took the heat off the gravy. I'm going to add a knob of butter cold butter into the gravy and what that does is it gives a nice little sheen to the gravy and this is what they call polishing the sauce in French wow is that good Let's plate this bad boy. Let's get rid of this silly garnish.
you can see how juicy that is. I hope you can see it. Yeah, it's nice and crispy on the outside. It's very juicy. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera. I'm going to serve that with some sautéed red cabbage with fennel seed. And I have some yellow rice, sorry, wild rice. And I like to serve wild rice with poultry. I think it goes really nice. And it's, it's, it's typically an American product. Wild rice is from Canada. not a European thing. Okay, I got some of this gravy. Put that on the rice as well. And there we have it, folks. Chef Kevin's garlic baked chicken now let's just do the taste test that's the fun part let's dive right into this because I'm so hungry That red cabbage is really nice. The fennel has a nice little accent to it. That's one of the healthiest foods you can eat. And I made sure I cooked it al dente. You don't want to overcook it. If you overcook it, the more nutrition and taste goes away. Wild rice is delicious. This is so tender. Mm. I love all the the flavorings in here. Really awesome. The the garlic is there, but it's not in your face. I can definitely taste the lemon in there. Come to Papa. You know what? I'm going to put some more gravy on this and just enjoy it while it's nice and warm okay folks if you like my videos if you like me my style whatever then throw me a friggin bone here throw me a freaking bone here